At this time, I'd like to call to order the City of Douglasville City Council Legislative Meeting of Thursday, December the 3rd, 2015. At this time, I'm going to ask Mr. Bill Osborne if he'd open us with the invocation. Then after that, I'm going to ask the Mayor Pro Tem Larry Yockey to lead us in the Pledge to the Flag. So at this time, we'll all stand, please. Let's bow our heads. Father God in heaven, we come to you tonight in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, I come to you at this time on a special occasion of a meeting of the city council. And we just pray that you would just guide the deliberations tonight. Lord, I just at this time would uh, like to lift up to you uh, uh, three of our uh, elected officials who soon will be completing their service here with the city. Pray especially for... Mayor Harvey Persons, for Councilman Carl Pope, Councilman Doug Laguire. Lord, we thank you for their uh, efforts and their uh, consideration of things for this city, and we just ask that you would bless each of them as they go forward in the months ahead. Also pray for the other members of this current city council, Lord, that you would bless each and every one of them and give them direction and guidance. Lord, as we look ahead to the next year, I just pray uh, your blessings on uh, Mayor-elect uh, Rochelle Robinson and the two new council members coming in, uh, Richard Siegel and Chris Watts, <laughs> for all the council members, and I uh, just pray that you would just guide them in the days, weeks, months ahead. Lord, I thank you that I've had the privilege for the past 25 years of serving as city manager of the city. Thank you for that experience and all the people that I've had the opportunity and the pleasure of working with. And I just lift up to you, uh, Marsha Hampton, the new city manager coming in, that you would just be very much with her. Watch over her and keep her safe and give her wisdom and the directions to help uh, move this city forward. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for this time of year as we look to the birth of your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you that we have this opportunity uh, tonight and in all other occasions, especially to call to mind this particular season of the year. Lord, also as in closing, just want to keep in mind the families in California that uh, suffered so much uh, destruction in the last couple of days. For those who were wounded, we just pray that you miraculously would heal them. For those who were killed, we just pray for their family members, just comfort them during this time of uh, sorrow. Now, I ask that you would be with us day by day, and may we always give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Be seated, please. Thank you, Mr. Osborne. <clears throat> this time, again, I'd like to welcome you to the city of Douglasville, December the 3rd, City Council Legislative Work Session. This is a work session where items that are presented for discussion tonight and no official action will be taken. Official action will be taken on the items discussed tonight on Monday, December the 7th. The business you're here to discuss is not listed as an agenda item. There will be ample time under the agenda item comments from citizens and delegates section to discuss your business. There are a few protocol items now I'd like to make you aware of before we start this meeting. I ask that you listen closely so there's no misunderstanding about how tonight's meeting will be conducted. I ask you to keep your comments on a professional level, dealing with the facts that are important for this governing body to make their decision. We will not accept comments that are considered by the chair to be a personal attack 
on any individual or group of individuals. You will receive a warning from the chair if you deviate from this requirement. A second deviation will result in a request for you to leave the chambers and the premises for the evening. Only one person will be talking at a time. Please do not applaud or react to speakers. Speak from the audience. Chair, carry on a conversation with others in the audience or disrupt the order of this meeting in any way. I will remind you that we're only required to accept public comment on zoning matters. We're not required to accept public comment on other items before this council body. We accept public comment on all items because we believe it enables us to make better decisions, but we will maintain order. As the chair of this meeting, at any time during the meeting, I'm prepared to stop public comment on any agenda item if I believe the general good of the meeting will not benefit from actions being taken by a member or members of the audience. If you have a pager cell phone or other electronic device, I ask that you either power them off or put them in the silent mode at this time. Agenda items will be handled as follows. The committee chairperson will read the agenda item. Then the person representing the agenda item or the applicant will make his or her presentation first, and that will be the only opportunity for you to present information. Then the mayor and members of the council will possibly ask questions of the applicant or seek additional information. After that, the committee chair will ask for comments or statements from the audience. There's a maximum time limit of 30 minutes. For those who speak in favor of the agenda item, the applicant's presentation is included in this time allotment. Those who speak in opposition to the item will also have 30 minutes. Each speaker will be limited to five minutes. I ask that you fill out one of the sheets that were at the door, double doors that you came through uh, entering this chamber, then provide the sheet to the Madam clerk or deputy clerk to my right when you approach to speak. When you come to the podium, please provide your information form then to the city clerk or deputy clerk. Tell her if you're speaking in favor of or against the project. Then state your name and address for the record, then proceed with your comments. Each person has one opportunity to comment on each agenda item. No reappearances if you think of something later you forgot or did not say initially. This meeting is not a question and answer format. This meeting is not a debate format, but a format that gives you the opportunity to make public comment on the respective agenda items. Please do not address your comments to the chair, not to the members of the audience, or to the applicant or city staff. If your information is repetitive of information presented earlier in this meeting or any other meetings on this matter, there's no need to present the same information again. If your information is repetitive, I will remind you then request that you move on to any new information you are prepared to present. Our policy requires that printed information used for review be submitted in advance and included in each council member's work packet. Therefore, I ask that you do not pass out or distribute additional information to the council. This also includes a citizen comment period with any questions about the protocol or is there anyone that does not understand the protocol for tonight's meeting? Okay. Hearing none, we will move on with the presentations and announcements portion of tonight's meeting. And before we do that, as you, if you have a copy of your agenda, you see that there are uh, several people listed on the agenda that we will be making presentations for, but also in the audience with us tonight, we have the new mayor-elect, Ms. Rochelle Robinson. We have with us the council member-elect, uh, Mr. Richard Siegel, and we have with us council member-elect, Mr. Chris Watts. Uh, my congratulations to all three of you on your campaigns and your victory for your office that you will be taking as of the first of the year. And with that being said, the democratic process that we have is a wonderful thing. Uh, I've told several of you on different occasions that if you've never watched a presidential inauguration, you need to watch it sometimes. 
And sometimes people get caught up in the process of the pomp and circumstance of the uh, inauguration itself and maybe miss the point of what really is taking place. And when you sit there, if you get to watch another one, watch it. It's fascinating, but remember what it represents. And what it represents is the transfer of power, control, authority, and everything that goes with it of the most powerful nation on the face of this planet. And what's significant about that? What's significant about it is it's kind of like making sausage. And that the process can be sometimes very messy. If you've never been a party to making sausage, you're not sure what I'm talking about, but you can only imagine. But think about it. And in that process, though, when you get to the finished product, it's something to thoroughly enjoy. And that's what we have in this country with the democratic process that we have. And each one of us are able to share in whatever level that you wish to share or participate, but then be the benefactors of the beneficiaries of the outcome of the process. And it is truly a wonderful, wonderful process that people have fought and died that each and every one of us can enjoy, not only at the national, the state, and the local level. So watch the process, engage, participate in it at whatever level you like, but know that it is a very, very unique and precious process that we in our country have that a lot of folks have fought and died for and continue to defend around this globe. So. Uh, Welcome to the newly elect, or elect, and I uh, wish you much success and wish this city much success. So welcome, and uh, we'll continue with the meeting. Now, at this time, we are going to present some certificates of recognition for uh, service by my, well, we're going to present the service recognitions by myself to former Keep Douglasville Beautiful, and if I, Call out your name if you would, come forward, and then as I get everyone up here, then if individually you would like to stand at the podium, introduce yourself, and make whatever comments you would wish to make as long as you uh, limit them to uh, at least or no less than or no more than five minutes. But um, we want to recognize your service to this great city. And it takes a lot of people working together, doing a lot of things individually and then collectively to make this the great city that it is. So at this time, I'd like to ask board member Bob Carpenter of the Keep Douglasville Beautiful Board to come forward. The former Personnel Appeals Board member, Mr. Wilford Smith, is he with us tonight? If you'll come to the podium, please. And then Mr. Brian D. Holloway of the Personnel Appeals Board, if he's with us. And then Mr. Gary L. Warner, if you'll come forward. I'm going to read each one of these so that we recognize you certainly individually and then collectively for your service. And we have a certificate of appreciation for your service and the job that you have done individually for this great city. So let me read the first one. And this is a certificate of appreciation presented to Gary L. Warner in recognition for your time, four years, of dedicated service with the city of Douglasville. Thank you for your service to your local community through active volunteer, and notice I said volunteer, participation in local government. Your enthusiastic dedication to serve has impacted the growth and development 
in the city of Douglasville. On this third day of December 2015, as mayor of the city of Douglasville, I wish to honor you with this, signif this certificate and recognition and extend a heartfelt thank you. Let's give a round of applause to Mr. Warren. The next certificate of appreciation is presented to Mr. Bob Carpenter in recognition for your time of four years and eight months of dedicated service with the city of Douglasville. Thank you for your service to your local community through active volunteer participation in the local government. Your enthusiastic dedication to serve has impacted the growth and development in the city of Douglasville on this third day of December. As mayor of the city of Douglasville, I wish to honor you with this certificate and extend a heartfelt thank you. So let's have a round of applause to Mr. Parker. And when I read both of those and I commented on one, you noted that I said volunteer. Uh, these gentlemen didn't receive any enumeration or renumeration for their uh, service. Uh, they did it out of volunteer and wanting to have an uh, impact on our local community. And for that, we thank you for your dedication and uh, your support through your volunteer efforts. Would either one of you like to make a comment? Now, I know, I, I know both of you, and I know neither one of you are bashful, but... Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for this, uh, for this opportunity to address the council and the members here. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Councilman Larry Yaki for nominating me to sit in this position, and thank you for the board for voting me in to this position. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd also like to echo your comments about the Madam Mayor coming in, the, the two councilmen coming in, and echo Mr. <coughs> excuse me, Mr. Bill Osborne wishing the sitting councilman Godspeed. Many prayers before you make your decision, and um, good luck. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank it you, was Mr. It's an Mayor. honor to, to serve you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate your service. Thank you very much. Mr. Carpenter? <coughs> I would just like to say it was an honor to have been chosen to sit on this committee, and it was a privilege to serve our community. Uh, for 140 years, this community has been growing, and for the last four years, eight months, I've had the privilege to be able to serve by being a part of Keep Douglasville Beautiful. And we have done a lot as a committee to be able to help the, the city to be beautiful, to recognize the environmental impact that we may be able to have. And I wanna thank Larry Yaki for the first few years I was a part of Keep Douglasville Beautiful to work close with him and also you, Mayor, you. Uh, to be able to work with you as well. I wanna thank uh, and recognize Chan Weeks because of her dedication that she makes to this uh, community as well. Thank you so much. Again, it was my honor. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. I'm gonna come forward and present these. I'll present them individually so that if, uh, Steve, you're gonna get some pictures. And we'll, uh, Take some individual pictures so you'll have some to uh, keep, and I'll get the council to stand, and uh, I'll come forward and make them. Yeah. 
Hey, buddy. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, next item on the agenda. <clears throat> this one may take some time, and we're going to take some time to do this one. This one is a presentation of special recognition by myself, Mayor Harvey Persons, and the City Council to Mr. B William D. Osborne for 25 years of dedicated service as the City Manager of the City of Douglasville. Mr. Osborne, and I could read his bio, and he has a, an esteemed career of public service in many areas. And one thing a lot of people don't know, served as the youngest assistant city editor at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution at the ripe old age of what, Mr. Osborne, 23? 22. The assistant city editor. And if you haven't had the opportunity over the years to see his talent and ability in writing, you've missed something. Um, has a talent for that that very few people this day and time have. We've had the discussion on numerous occasions. And he says, well, you know, when I first started in that industry, and Danielle, you can appreciate this, he said we got paid by the word. Is that, is that the case now, Danielle? <laughs> You're freelance, okay. But um, then after that, Mr. Osborne went on to years of service in a lot of different areas, but had a rich, rich history of public service, in a lot of different areas, ranging from the Southern Governor's Council to many other areas. But 25 years ago, decided to embark on a, uh, sometimes he calls it an adventure, another endeavor, another part of his life, and he was doing consulting at the time, and as a matter of fact, did some very successful consulting work for the city of Douglasville. I believe got, we got the first CDBG grant. Is that right, Bill? Um, and then recently, uh, the city got another one for a half million dollars. Um, so, but anyway, was doing the consulting work, and this city was looking for uh, a new city manager. And Mr. Osborne's name was in the hat and came down to two individuals. Now, this is where it gets... When I first got elected mayor, and I asked him, I said, you're going to have to quit doing that because maybe uh, some folks may put too much blame or maybe 
But anyway, he said, uh, he told the story. He said, you know, if you like what I do, thank him. If you don't like what I do, blame him or have done. Because 25 years ago, I had the, the good fortune of sitting on this council as a council member. And as I said, it came down to a vote, and there were two people. And a lot of folks thought I was going to vote for the other guy. And I chose to vote for Mr. Osborne. Probably one of the, I've had the opportunity to vote on a lot of things over the years. That was probably one of the best votes I ever made. Because, and, 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 and I only tell that not taking any, any responsibility because the job that Mr. Osborne's done over the last 25 years, he deserves the honor, the credit, and the accolades for. Because you see, back in 1990, this city had 100 and something employees. Population was right at 11,000 and the combined city budgets were a little over $5 million. It was a much smaller community on the outskirts of Atlanta. And certainly under his tutelage and guidance and leadership and the help of a lot of other folks, has seen it grow to now this city's combined budgets and that's sometimes folks think that's just the general, but it's the general fund, the enterprise funds, and other, but to not quite, but almost $40 million has seen the number of employees grow from a little over 100 to almost 300 today. And it's seen the city's population grow from, at that point in time, right at 11,000 to last census we somewhere between 32 and 35 i'm guessing we're closer maybe now five years after the census maybe to 40,000. he's seen the city on the outskirts of atlanta grow to the and helped it grow to the 25th largest city in the state of georgia and has had a tremendous role and impact in helping that successfully happen. So, and I'll add one other thing for certainly the viewers out there in TV land and the viewers here in the audience that may be not, and you may think, well, you know, 25 years, a lot of people retire with 25 years of service. Not as a city manager, they don't with the same city. It's a very stellar achievement. Uh, and it speaks to his abilities to deal with people, speaks to his ability to provide leadership, speaks to his ability to communicate. So, and I've said all that, and he's sitting over there thinking, get on with it. Because you see, he really didn't want to come tonight. But I told him he didn't have a choice. He's still on the payroll. Because he deserves the recognition, the accolades, not only by this mayor and council, but the employees, former mayors and council, and the citizens that owe him a debt of gratitude for the dedication, the hard work, and commitment that he's made to this city for the last 25 years. So, Bill, I'm gonna ask you to come forward to the podium, if you will. And I know you're dying to say something, but, and I'm gonna let you in a minute. But the first thing I wanna do is Congressman David Scott was unable to be with us tonight and asked me to read this presentation on his behalf that I'm going to present, and it's from the congressional record, 
of the United States of America, and it was the proceedings and debates of the 114th Congress, first session, House of Representatives. And it's where the congressman stood in the well of the House of Representatives and said, Mr. Speaker, I rise to pay tribute to the accomplishments of Mr. William Osborne. As he retires from a long career spanning both the public and private sectors, whichever job he held, it was clear that Mr. Osborne always had Georgia and its citizens on his mind. Originally a journalist, Mr. Osborne graduated from the University of Georgia's Journalism School with a distinction and went on to work at the Atlanta Journal. After a few years, Mr. Osborne left the journal to direct and help establish DeKalb County's Research Information Office. The office was one of the first public information offices in the United States of America. When the National Association of Counties established their own public information office, Mr. Osborne was chosen to be vice president by his colleagues. All, listen to this now. Almost concurrently, he established the city of Atlanta's public information office and held the office for a few months before setting his sights on helping improve the educational system in Atlanta and Conyers as director of information community relations and later of evaluation and dissemination of pupil personnel services he undertook. The effort of desegregating and integrating Atlanta's public schools in the 1960s. He's helped to develop and improve communities throughout Atlanta as a consultant and throughout the southern United States as part of the Council of State Governments. Mr. Osborne has advocated for citizens in the improvement of Georgia as well throughout the United States. As the city manager for Douglasville, which he was reappointed re 24 times, Mr. Osborne saw the city triple in population size. He worked with three different mayors and 30 different city council members. That's an accomplishment within itself. He oversaw and guided the city as its budget quadrupled in size. Under Mr. Osborne's guidance and leadership, Douglasville has continued to grow and prosper. He will certainly be missed by all who have had the honor of working with him. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to honor the achievement of Mr. Osborne and to commend his passion and dedication for the local government and citizens, not only in Douglasville, but throughout the state of Georgia, I ask my colleagues to join me in venerating this distinguished colleague in service to the people of Georgia. And at that point, they all applauded and stood to recognize. And as you know, when I read the, I've read the protocol, every meeting for the last four years, that's something that I discourage and do not allow because I think it's disruptive of the meetings and sets a tone. But tonight, it was well-deserved and needed. So thank you for your years of service. And now, that's from the United States House of Representatives. But on behalf of the mayor, in this city council, we have a plaque of our own to give you. And let me read it. It says, Bill Osborne, a man of spirituality and faith in God. That's first on the list. A man of integrity, a respected city leader, a loyal public servant, a friend, 
and a confidant to many. A man with an excellent work ethic, a man with stories to tell, and there may be a book in the works. A man of longevity, a city manager. Thank you for all of your service for 25 years from all of us at the city of Douglasville, December 2015. And there's something at the bottom of the plaque, and if there's anybody that ever deserved this, it's a key to the city of Douglasville. So, richly deserved for a 25 years of service, and thank you for that. Council members, anybody have anything they'd like to add? Bill, as uh, I, I think I was the special one, probably. He was saying there was 30 of us, so I think I was the special one. <laughs> but it has been a joy and a privilege to work with you over this past six years, and uh, uh, I wish you well in everything that you do from this time forward. So, you, you, as you said, you've been a friend, you've been an advisor, you've been all the things that you would expect or a, uh, a senior statesman to have. You have all of it. And, uh, I really appreciate the, uh, the, your support you've given us all for the last, in my case, for eight years of time. Special fellow. We're going to miss you. Thank you, Mr. Osborne. I just appreciate all you've done for the city over these last 25 years. And I've only been affiliated in this position for four now, but uh, you've got my vote in anything you'd like to do or wish to do in the future. I would hope that it would be in some way slowing down, but I just have a, this inkling that won't happen. <laughs> Best of wishes to you, sir. Mr. Osborne, thank you so much for your dedication to the city of Douglasville and also the constituents, and I pray that your endeavors in life will be very fulfilling and, and um, the God-fearing man that you are and um, my relationship that I had with I say my guardian angel and your beautiful wife, Jane, you brought a lot of a lot to the table. So enjoy and have fun and, and just as you do, remember to put God first. Mr. Osmond, thank you again. And they always say the best for last. And I'm going to give you a lifetime chair out at the Wednesday wind down on Wednesday evening. So don't stop coming. <laughs> thank you. Any comments from or any staff that would like to make comments at this time? I guess I just want to know is Bill going to have some funny parting words? He usually has something on the list because this is really it. So this is the last one. So he has to at least have something that he has to leave us with. I'm certain he does. Oh, there's something bottled up in there, I can assure <laughs> you. Um, but I'll definitely say on behalf of staff and for myself, um, and, and I've said it numerous times, I'm very appreciative of what uh, Bill's done for me personally and professionally. Um, he has uh, definitely opened a lot of doors, and probably many he's not quite, he didn't even know himself, but um, I've always been appreciative of that, and, and him serving in the capacity of a mentor has been, it's meant a lot to me, and, uh, and I think not only just for myself, but for staff. So thank you, and we do wish you well. Any other staff before the colonel says some comments? Any other staff members? Chief, I, I can see you sitting over there. Appreciate all the uh, wisdom you've given me. Uh, I've been here going on 29 years, and I'm going to miss some of those sayings. You, you come up with some good sayings, and you're going to have to write those down and <laughs> give me those one-liners because uh, you, you, you had some good ones, but it always a point to every one of them. And, uh, you know, I... I'll be calling on you to draw some, uh, info, you know, some wisdom from you, and I really appreciate you. And thank you for your service, and thank you for your friendship. I'll always be there. Thank you. Any other staff members? Colonel? Mr. Dodson? Thank you, Mayor. Bill, it's been a real pleasure. I'm a whole lot easier, and I especially appreciate the way you would pretend that I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> I hope you've left Marsha the same instructions. Good luck. I thank uh, you, Mr. Mayor, for your opening comments, and I uh, do appreciate uh, what the congressman did, and 
appreciate each of the comments made by the elected officials and, and uh, some of the staff people. I'm going to make only a few comments. I mean, after so much has been said, it's so very positive. I don't want to blow it by saying something <laughs> stupid. Uh, but, uh, no, it has been a pleasure uh, to be here. Actually, I've been associated with the city of Douglasville for more than 30 years uh, from the time that I came here to do consultant work and then uh, just kept doing one contract after another. And then... Uh, at one point received the, the telephone call from, at that time, city manager Nick Banks uh, saying that they wanted me to come uh, to work for the city, which I did, and, and just a few months later uh, was appointed city manager and have been in that position, as the mayor said, for some 25 years. Uh, and I have had a, a, a varied career uh, from newspapering to working for uh, local government, uh, for state government. Uh, uh, the mayor alluded to the fact that uh, being executive director of the Southern Governors Association, which is an association of 19 governors from southern and border states, Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, uh, which was a great experience and ended up with an office not only in Atlanta but on Capitol Hill in Washington. Uh, and, uh, and that was a uh, uh, a real thrill to be able to do that. And one day I uh, happened to be talking with the director of the state of Florida's uh, Washington office. Most of the, the states have uh, offices. Some of them have large offices. The state of Florida, as you can imagine, has a pretty good size office. Uh, at that time, close to 100 people in it. And we were talking about uh, the work that we did, uh, me being executive director of the Southern Governors Association. And, and the comment he made, he said, you know, up here in Washington, when we're up here working with the officials, said uh, they're up here way above, sometime above reality. Uh, but it's on such a broad <laughs> basis. He said, now, if you were working down at, at the state capitol uh, in Atlanta, uh, you'd be closer but you still are up kind of removed from a lot of things he said but if you really want to be where the rubber hits the road go to work at the local government level and you will have to deal with real problems with real people in real time uh, and uh, so after i left the governor's association and a, and a couple of years with the christian ministry i uh, was working consultant work with local government had the opportunity to come here it's been a great 25 years, and I can tell you it is uh, being city manager, and Marsha already knows this, and she'll find out um, more and more. You are working where the rubber uh, meets the road, but it's been great. I've enjoyed it, uh, especially to, to each one of you and each of your colleagues who's not here tonight, uh, as well as others that I've worked with. I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. I appreciate your support and your friendship. Uh, the only thing that uh, I do have to say as a caveat that a lot of people are, are telling me that uh, enjoy my retirement. I intend to enjoy what I'm going to do, but I'm in the market for a new job, and, uh, uh, and I don't expect to go sit on my back porch. Uh, now, I don't know what I'll end up doing. I figure that I'm going to either end up working for local government or a consulting firm or something if if all else fails, uh, uh, I may even decide I need to go back in, in, to a newspaper or, or just uh, write. So if I write about you in some column or the book in the future, you'll know. Uh, Easy where, now. That's where I'm going to put all those sayings, uh, Chief. Uh, uh, and, uh, but again, thank you very much. I, I deeply appreciate uh, all that each of you has meant to me. I wish uh, each of you well. Uh, as I said in my prayer, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Councilman McGuire, and, and Councilman Pope, if he would hear uh, Godspeed with uh, you for the future. Uh, for those of you who will be serving in these capacities, all of them in, in 2016, wish you the very best. And the final thing I'd say is, and, and I think the uh, uh, one thing that I look back from this point backward, it's really been a pleasure of working with an exceptional staff down through the years. And the city of Douglasville, I think, has done a great job of promoting from within. So I can look over at the chief, I can look over at the city clerk, I can look at the 
incoming city manager Easy. examples of, of where <laughs> we've had people that uh, we have really trained that uh, will do an excellent job for you in the future. Thank you very much, and I'll see you around. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to let you come back up so we can do some pictures. You're not going to get away that easy. Sometimes we're there, we're sometimes we're not. This may take some time to do, but I'm going to ask counsel if you'll come around. Yeah, let's do it. Come on. see all of us. And let everybody come around and let's so we've got a good. Let's do this one first. Let's get the center so you got a good backdrop. Get closer. Be nice. Okay. Let me give you this one. Here you go. Let me give you. Jenny, you want to get one with Bill by himself? Okay. You're down at the bottom. Uh, You're down at the bottom. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for indulging us in the presentations. And as I told you from the beginning, uh, this could take a few minutes, but to me, with to recognize and appreciate 25 years of service, uh, to me, you don't rush through that. Uh, it needs to be done. Needs to be done right. So, again, Mr. Osborne, thank you for 25 years of friendship. Uh, first of all, but then thank you for 25 years of service to this great city. Thank you. May God be with you and be blessed in uh, whatever undertaking you embark on. So uh, this, you don't have to come to another meeting now, but tonight, <laughs> thank you for indulging me. Okay, next item on the agenda is Public Safety Committee. I'm going to ask Chair of that committee, Councilman Davis, if you bring your committee forward this time. Please, sir. Yes, sir. I have one item. <coughs> request for a change in agent outlet manager and transfer of alcoholic beverage licenses for the retail package, sale of wine, malt beverages, spiritual liquor, and the following establishment. Licensee Beverage, LLC, DBA, Highway 5, Beverage Center, location 9079, Highway 5. Current agent outlet manager is Cherie Kearney. Proposed agent outlet manager is Shahi Valina. 
and required investigation has been conducted and the required fees has been paid into the city finance department. Will the applicant please come down if you're here? State your name and uh, address, please, sir. Shahid Valiani. And your address? Uh, 4569 Wickerson Place, uh, Samarna, Georgia, 30082. I'll get that. Can you speak into, into the mic just a little louder, please, sir? Uh, for Beverage, LLC. Council, do we have any questions from the council? Yes, I would just be curious, sir, what experience do you have in the past, if any, as to management and sale of, of uh, spirituous liquor and beer and alcoholic beverages in the state of Georgia? Um, I have uh, 15 years uh, experience. Uh, I have, um, I'm being the manager for a convenience store, which is sell beer for 15 years. And uh, so I have 15 years experience for selling beers. Retail, that's retail that's package. Retail sale. package. Okay. And what sort of um, setup does your operation have as to identification as to legal age of buying the spirituous liquor and beer and wine? How do you um, check your potential customers for that? Um, actually, uh, the right now, you know, like um, the corporation I am right now, we have the the register, anytime you do the beer sale, you have to be enter the date of birth and everything for the customer. Okay. And um, also what I do for uh, my employees now, uh, I send them for the training, which is they do once a year for the, uh, so they can get certificate and everything from the Douglas County. And also I train them every month, once a month, make sure what they're doing and everything. And also I can check from my house, from the camera to make sure they're asking for ID and everybody and all that. Thank you. Sir, this is the location down by the Target on Chapel Hill? Highway 5. Uh, can you ask me the question one more time? Your location is on Highway 5, correct? Yeah, it's on Highway 5, yes. Okay. It's 9079 Highway 5, to okay. be exact. <laughs> just, just pull it up so it does. Yeah, I believe that's the one right there on the right there. Next to the uh, Japanese place, I think. Mattress place, I believe. Mm -hmm. Council? <coughs> audience? Anyone from the audience? Mr. Mayor? Excuse me. Correct. Okay, this is not a new. How long you been there, sir? How long I've been here in the United States? No, no, no. How long your business been in operation there at that location? You talking about the Highway Five? Yes. Yeah. Uh, highway Five. We're gonna take over as soon as we get the license. So this is apply for the new license. So this is a new ownership. Yeah, new ownership. Okay. The facility's been there a while. It's just a transfer of ownership, I believe, in addition to the license holder. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. If there's no more questions, let's come back on Monday, sir, and, and uh, we'll have a decision for you, okay? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for that report, Councilman Davis. Next item on the agenda will be community and economic development. I ask Chair that committee, Councilman Adams, if you bring your committee forward this time, please, sir. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll have one item tonight under community and economic development. That is to authorize the community and development services director to advertise for bids to lease the old city hall building at 8485 West Courthouse Square for use as a filming location for the period of January 1, 2016 through March 1, 2016 with each bid to include obligations to move and store city personal property for the duration of the lease. Mr. Lynn. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, yeah, this is, you probably remember this from a couple months ago. This was the exact agenda item that we had. 
turns out we didn't get any bids uh, for some reason when we when we advertised. It looks like the uh, intended target did not meet the deadline. So I uh, spoke with uh, uh, Miss Littlefield, and she suggested actually said we need to to rebid it out. Uh, so that that's what's coming before you now. Uh, given the time frame, the bid would actually go from January to March. Uh, with them, uh, them, the uh, people occupying the old city hall right now, doing a 30-day lease for the month of December while it is out to bid. Um, however, this month, December marks the month that their rent went up from $1,250 to $2,500, which would be the monthly rent that would be required for anyone that bids on the property. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be free. Happy questions from council? Uh, yes. Have the local establishments been uh, notified that of these this time frame and also about street closures and all that kind of stuff, which happens with filming? Uh, they will be. We don't actually have um, an additional film date uh, right now. Uh, what the film company wanted to do was to keep the location secure, secured um, in the event that it was going to be used again. Uh, at last uh, time I spoke with the applicant, they said that uh, the last two episodes of the season they were filming for the show had not been written yet, but the location had not been written into the previous six um, after that first filming. So right now we don't know a date, but I assure you there will be plenty of communication and every effort from staff level to make sure that we notify businesses if there's any impact. However, we are going to encourage uh, filming to ha take place uh, during non-peak hours where it would not affect any open business at that time. Okay, so basically what you're doing is just blocking it so that nobody else can use it for that time. Frame. That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Any public comment? Mr. Lynn, before you leave, I'd like to piggyback on what Mr. Yaki said because I have had conversation with some of the other neighboring uh, establishments in the area concerning uh, what they feel are a lack of possibly um, ample notice and things that we, we as a city may have promised them that may have not have occurred. So I would want to make sure that in doing this, we do make every effort to uh, assist those those present business owners in the area. Let me make sure that I understand what we'll be voting on then on Monday night. This would be to rebid this because we did not receive any bids in our first attempt. Is that what you're saying? Oh uh, yes, sir. Just for us to have the authorization to place an ad in the paper to advertise for bids for the property because we oh. got we did not get a bid. Just for my own personal information, are we required to rebid it if we did not receive any bids and we put it out for bid? If you want to lease the property to anyone for more than 30 days at a time, uh, you need to, to bid it out. Okay. Just want to make sure I understand. And, and I did email the applicant, um, the current leaseholder uh, that's doing the 30-day leases, saying, hey, d d do I understand correctly that you're not going to use the building as you didn't submit a bid? And they did the mea culpa. Sorry, I didn't. I forgot. I missed the deadline. We do want to use the building, and that's when we. So they'll continue on a month to month, then, with the possibility that if another person bids it, another group bids it, they may have to uh, move out. Then. And and the bid is worded: if anyone wants to use it as a filming location, they are open to bid on it. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there any reason that we could not put this on the uh, consent agenda for Monday? Council's pleasure. Appears to be in order. Thank you. I'd request that then. Thank you. That's all that I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank Very you. good. Thank you, Councilman Adams, for that report. And next item on the agenda will be the Planning and Development Committee. And in the absence of the Chair, Councilman Pope, I will ask the Vice Chair of that committee, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Yaki, if you'll bring Planning and Development forward at this time, please. I have three items. Request appro approval for a revised final plat for the purpose of combining lots 119, 120, and 121 in the Rosewood subdivision located on Rose Lake Circle in Landlock 161, District 2, Section 5, application by Aaron McCullough of Hughes Ray Company. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for hearing our uh, name application. And ad, name and address for the record. Uh, Aaron McCullough, 6554 East Church Street, Douglasville, Georgia. Uh, Councilman Yaki, we are uh, representing a uh, 
a homeowner there in Rosewood subdivision. She has purchased these three lots, 119, 120, and 121. Okay. And uh, she is the adjacent homeowner to these lots. And she purchased these lots for her own personal use and enjoyment, uh, primarily to provide a green space of buffer between her and an adjacent uh, common space, I believe, which there are some tennis courts down the, down the street from her. And as a result of that, uh, she wanted to combine these three lots for primarily reduction in her HOA assessment and dues. Uh, for holding these three lots, she has no intention of building on these lots, uh, just primarily while it is in her possession, just to use as a green space buffer between her home and that adjacent uh, common area. So has she contacted the HOA to say, find out if this is okay that they combine those three lots so that they only have to pay one association due versus four? Yes, sir, she sure, certainly has. Uh, we've contacted the HOA concerning that, and this was the process and the requirement uh, to go through and make this revised final plan to combine these three lots into one lot uh, before making her application to the HOA for that. Okay. Are there any questions from the council? If they, uh, if you combine all those lots, uh, and sometime they decide to build something on that, then. Uh, is there any restrictions that they would face uh, then? Because most of those lots have, most of those areas have houses on all of them. That's correct, yes sir. Uh, these three lots currently are, uh, well just to be honest, they are very difficult lots in their geometric configuration to build upon. That's one reason why these, these three lots are still sitting vacant as they are. Uh, but the, the only restrictions would be the, the standard zoning and HOA requirements. Uh, that currently exist. Are there any other questions? Mayor? None. Thank you. Uh, any from the audience? Okay. If you'll come back on Monday, we'll take this up. Thank you. I'll, I'll stay, if you don't mind, for the following item as a representative oh. for Mr. Duke. Okay. The next item is request approval for a revised final plot for the purpose of combining two land tracks. <coughs> <clears throat> located at 6530 Church Street, parcel number 0020015001, and 6487 Spring Street, parcel number 0020015004, located in Landlot 20, District 1, Section 5, application by Barry Duke <coughs> at Church Street Land Partis uh, Partnership. And you're involved in that one too? Yes, sir, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Councilman, this is the last step that uh, we have with the uh, proposed project for the ACE hardware. We've been before uh, Mayor and Council a few times for a few other items. This is the last step that uh, is required before we can submit uh, construction documents for a permit to fall in line with the, uh, the current code. Okay. Any questions from Mayor and Council? Would, would we think that this is, in fact, Mr. McCullough, the last step? Now, I know, as you said, we've been, you've been before this Council and the uh, the other bodies in the city several times as far as everyone knows is there anything else that would need to be done before permit uh, councilman adams i believe this is our last our understanding this is the last step in anticipation before submitting those documents great great job look forward to seeing that thank you sir okay thank you okay then that, the last item is approve uh, a variance from the subsection four dash I'm sorry, 4.03.01.A of the zoning ordinance to reduce the rear yard setback requirement on the east side of property on approximately 0 0.34 plus acres uh, located at 6817 Stone Creek Court in land for 20, landlot 24, District 1, Section 5, Parcel 171, a distance of 19.5 feet from the required 30 feet for a principal structure in a R-2 district for a required rear yard setback of 10.5 feet. Application was made by Andrew and Julia Hatfield. Here. I'm Andrew Hatfield. I live, it's actually 8617 Stone Creek Court, Douglasville, Georgia, 30135. Um, we're planning on, we're trying to put in a pool at the location. Um, we have an, a little bit of a, the 30 feet. We have plenty of room side to side uh, or north to south on the property. We just don't have enough room going back uh, to the property line to fit it. 
Any questions from the, the council? This is a variance to install a pool, not to build another structure on it, but install a pool in the ground. Just correct? a pool. Yes, sir. Just in the ground. a pool. That's so all. You're not asking to have a structure other than the pool nearer than the 10 and a half feet. Correct. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. And you're no not, pleasure. and you're not on, yes, it's in Arbor Station. Arbor Station, yeah. yes, sir. Um, are there any uh, utilities under this area that you're going to be building that pool over the top no, sir. of? Because I know we had some issues in Chapel Hills <coughs> where they have done that. So, um, okay, are there any other questions from the council? Any questions from the audience? Okay. Thank you. Come back on Monday and we'll take this up. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Thank you for that report, Councilman Yaki. I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem Yaki. Next item on the agenda is Parks and Recreation Committee. And I'll ask the chair of that committee, Mayor Pro Tem Yaki, do you have any business to bring forward? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Thank you for that report, Councilman. Mayor Pro Tem Yaki. That's okay. <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute. Okay. Next item on the agenda is Finance Committee, and I will ask the chair of that committee, Councilman Adams, would you bring your committee forward, please? Yes, sir. thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have one item tonight under finance, and that is to accept the one bid for lease of city-owned property at 6625 Brown Street and authorize the mayor to sign a three-year lease for this property with Riley's Early Learning Center Academy Incorporated. Ms. Hampton, who is handling Mr. Chairman, may I handle that for you? Yes, please uh, do. Thank we you. put that property out for bid uh, last month and received only one bid, and it is from the current user. Um, the bid, however, is, is uh, 1000 rather than the 1500 that they have been paying, and Ms. Tori Brown is here to, to answer any questions you have about it. Okay. Ma'am, would you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, my name is Tori Brown. I live at 5090 Roxton Lane, Douglasville, Georgia, 30135. Good evening, you, everyone. Any questions from council? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Brown, I really appreciate you and your great assets, and thank you for the great Thanksgiving dinner. You're welcome. Your former principal out there. Thank you. Tell them who your former principal is. Oh, um, Roger Bruce. Okay, yes, thank you. yes, he was there. <laughs> Any other comment? Councilman Adams, I have a comment I'd like to make. <clears throat> uh, when I first became mayor four years ago, one of the initial things that uh, we were charged and challenged with, and Mr. Osborne and I had several conversations with uh, the folks that were at that time managing this uh, learning facility and certainly they were great folks and uh, had big hearts but struggled uh, financially to make it work and we tried to work through some things and uh, then Miss Brown came along and has made this work and has made a very valuable contribution to the community with your efforts and what you do and certainly it is a passion isn't it thank you welcome uh so i applaud your efforts the last how many years now what is it three years three mm -hmm. yes sir for the last three years and uh we had some conversations initially about embarking on this endeavor and the financial challenges that uh, would be faced. And uh, Ms. Brown took on the challenge. And uh, I might add, has done an outstanding job. I hate that I was unable to make Thanksgiving luncheon, but had prior commitment, but... Uh, totally understand. Congratulations on job well done. I uh, encourage you to keep up the efforts and keep making the contribution to the community that you're making. So appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I have a question, oh, wow. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Councilman Adam, uh, is it possible that each three years we had to go back through the bid process, Ms. Susan? 
I don't understand your question, Mr. Davis. Uh, we won't need to go for three more years if you authorize a three-year lease. Do you want to go for just one year? Is that what you're saying? No, I was saying after every three years we had to go we had to put it back out for bid, do we? You will unless you put it out for bid again right now for a longer period. Okay, Councilman Adams, what you think? So, so if I understand it correctly, then this would be a three-year lease. We do not have to go and do anything else for three years as long as, as long as Ms. Brown continues there and, and pays this lease amount. Yes, sir. And, and with regard to what that lease amount is, the lease I drafted for you is at $1,500. Unless I receive direction otherwise, I'm going to take it down to $1,000, which was the bid. I think your question, Councilman, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Councilman, uh, I'm, 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 I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Bear with me. You get my age, you start to get a little slower. I know you're, but uh, it, it, your, I believe your question is, do we need to uh, do this? But at this point, it's been advertised mm -hmm. for the three-year lease. So at this point, uh, we don't have any option moving forward but unless we go out and re-advertise to make an open-ended lease and I don't believe that that's the pleasure I, I don't think this you can time. do an open-ended lease you could probably do what a 20 longer years. term yeah yes. uh, so at this time I don't think certainly don't want to speak for Miss Brown but I wouldn't think she wants to uh, uh, go through that process again I believe at this point she's probably happy with uh, the current agreement and uh, probably I'm guessing would like to go ahead and move forward at this time. Yes, please. So if that be your pleasure, Councilman Davis, unless you want to entertain something else. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm very right. happy. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chair, Mr. Um, Councilman Adams, it, with um, the council's consent, would this can this be put on the consent agenda? I have no problem with it. I, I would presume if there is is there any other discussion or any public comment concerning the item here another question is permissible and it would be the council's pleasure to put on the consent agenda your pleasure it appears that that is in order right. thank you thank, thank you very you. much but, will that be okay with you miss brown that is wonderful for me very thank good. you so much you're quite thank welcome you. you have a great holiday and a merry christmas thank you keep up the good work thank you mr mayor that's all we have under finance Very good. Thank you for that report, Councilman Adams. Next item on the agenda is information technology, and I'll ask the chairman of that committee, Mayor Pro Tem, Yaki, do you have any business to bring forward this time, sir? No, I'm tonight, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Thank you for that report, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Next item is maintenance and sanitation committee, and in the absence of the uh, maintenance and sanitation committee chair, I'll defer to the vice chairman. Uh, Councilman LaGuardia, do you have any business to bring forward out of maintenance and sanitation this time, sir? Very good, Very good. thank you for that report, uh, Councilman LaGuardia. Next item on the agenda is Transportation Committee. I'll ask Chair of that committee at this time. Uh, Councilperson Danley, do you have any business to bring forward at this time? Or if you would, just bring your committee forward, please. Mayor. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Two items. The first item is to adopt a resolution identifying the city streets to be included in the city's submission to GDOT under the 2016 LM LMIG resurfacing program. Okay. Mr. Roberts, thank you. And while I often admit I am not perfect, I am extremely not perfect tonight. There is one street we need to remove off of there, and it's really not that big of a deal. It's the Hardwick, the one for the 1.0. Um, I'm not sure why I was thinking that was over there. You might have noticed I stuttered when I said Hardwick because I was trying to say another word with it. And But this is in another part of town. It wouldn't make any sense to add that, that one-tenth mile to this. And uh, so my recommendation is to leave the West Strickland Street Newman Street, Club Drive, and McKay Industrial Boulevard, and that would be um, um, one-tenth mile less than what we had on, on that list earlier. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. And this is to be completed by the end of 2015? 
to, 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 our decision will be. We, we need to make the submission decision. to the Georgia Department of Transportation by 1231-2015. Okay, great, thank you. All right, do we have any questions or comments from our mayor and council? Any comments from our audience? All right, the second item is to authorize the mayor to sign a first amendment to the city's contract with Miller Architectural and Associates Incorporated to redesign the project for the Welcome Center TE grant, CSTEE-000-10759, and to reduce the estimated construction cost of the project for a consultant redesign fee of $9,000. Ms. Wright. Thank you. As you know, the city of Douglasville has a T grant to modify the Welcome Center in O'Neill Plaza. This is through the Department of Transportation. The um, project was put out to bid and advertised for four weeks, and one bidder bid on the project, and the project came in over bid by $332,000. Uh, staff had a meeting with consultants and management, and what we're looking at is reducing the project and the line item costs and uh, revising the scope and rebidding it. And in order for the um, consultant to do that, there is a fee to uh, redo the project and redo the bids. Uh, part of this, um, we feel that it came in over bid and that we're hearing from other engineering firms and other consultants is because of all the work in the Metro Atlanta, which is you have right now the Atlanta Braves Stadium the Falcons and the uh, Northwest Corridor project, which is utilizing a lot of workers, concrete, and construction um, supplies. <clears throat> once, um, once we have identified and they have come back with this information, um, don't we have a time frame of when we have to use that money? Um, we well, we do have a time frame, but the time frame for completing construction starts once your construction contract is signed. However, we have spoke with GDOT on this, and I told them I was bringing it to mayor and council tonight, and then we were gonna do a revision two or three weeks, and then hopefully have it out to bid after that. And I did speak with GDOT, and they approved that. Okay, as long as we're, as long as we're cool with that, I'm, I'm fine with it too. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Wright. Do we have any questions for our mayor and council, from the mayor and council? Any from our audience? If not, I have no other items under transportation. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Very good, thank you for that report, Council Person Danley. Next item on the agenda then will be Personnel Organization Committee, I as chair of that committee, uh, Councilman LaGuire, if you bring your committee forward this time. Please, sir. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a uh, two items. Got a little cockpit problem over here. I'm borrowing the uh, Mayor Pro Tem's uh, machine. First time adopting an ordinance amending the city code section 2-247 to eliminate insurance benefits for retired elected officials who initially take office after January the 8th, 2016. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council. Uh, in summary, from committee's meeting, um, we are looking to um, reduce our unfunded liability for the city, um, and with the Affordable Care Act, uh, as of January 1, 2016, um, elected officials will be able to go out to the uh, health care and exchange and purchase insurance, um, as well as uh, through a health care broker. If there are any questions, I'll take them. Questions on it? Kind of what we discussed in the uh, committee meeting. So the new elected officials will be a part of the retirement insurance program, the current retirement insurance program. Is that what we're referring here to? I'm sorry, the, the newly elected offic yes. officials mm -hmm. coming in 2016? Yes. Um, as, um, no, they will not, I'm sorry. The <coughs> Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem is the next item. Okay. They will be included in with the um, old plan, not the new plan. Okay. Just the next item. I'm missing my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> We're saving on electricity. Okay, I'll stay for the second item. No other questions. Second item, adopt an ordinance amending section 1116, 20-7, and 12-8 no, 12 12 of the Personnel Policies and Procedures Ordinance 
to eliminate post-employment insurance benefits for employees hired on or after January the 1st, 2016, and to eliminate city and COBRA benefits for dependents of city employees who die while employed for employees hired on or after January the 1st, 2016. Everybody understand that? Thank you, Councilman McGuire. The, uh, just to give you a little bit of um, the background, the uh, COBRA Act uh, law mandates an insurance program um, uh, to give some employees and their uh, dependents the ability to continue health care insurance coverage uh, after leaving employment. Currently, the city of Douglasville will pay 102% of COBRA uh, premiums for, for former employees' dependents who die while, in, while employed. And COBRA also allows these dependents to remain on city of uh, Douglasville's health insurance plans at current employee rates for up to 36 months. And again, with the new ACA Act, there are uh, other uh, insurance options available for these dependents. So staff recommends this item for a consent agenda. Do I have any questions for anyone? Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Olson. Thank you, Councilman LaGuire. Next item on the agenda is ordinances and intergovernmental committee. And I'll ask the chair of that committee, Councilman Davis, do you have any business to bring forward at this time? Mr. Mayor, at this time I have no business, but I would like to go into executive session for discussion of personnel and potential litigation after the meeting, please, sir. Okay. Uh, at this point, then, at the end of the staff reports, if that be your pleasure, then um, we conclude the staff reports then i'll ask for a motion on that and ask you then to entertain your motion then please sir yes sir all right to go. yes that's thank all you. i have mr mayor thank you very good thank you for that report councilman davis next item on the agenda is education training committee and i'll ask the chair of that committee uh, councilperson danley you have any business to bring forward this time please ma'am no business under education. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is to, under other business, is to enter in the minutes of the December the 7th, 2015 City Council meeting the results of the Tuesday, December the 1st, 2015 City of Douglasville general election runoff for mayor. Well, you be doing that, or will we do that on Monday on the official meeting tonight, or? We'll do that on Monday night, Mayor, because the votes won't be certified until Friday. Okay, very good. That's what I thought. Okay, next item on the agenda is the city attorney, Mr. Dotson. Colonel, you have any business to bring forward? No business, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Thank you for that report. Next item on the agenda is Chief Assistant City Attorney Miss Littlefield. Do you have any business to bring forward this time? No business, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Thank you for that report, Miss Littlefield. Next item on the agenda is Assistant City Manager. Miss Hampton, do you have any business to bring forward this time? Um, no, sir, I do not. Very good. Thank you, Miss Hampton. Next item on the agenda is comments from citizens and delegates. Do we have any citizens or delegates that would like to come forward at this time and make public comment? Hearing none at this point. Uh, Ms. Hampton, uh, it appears to be blank, but do we have any staff reports that need to be made at this time? No, sir, we do not. Very good. So at this time, per your request, Councilman Davis, I'm going to ask that you make a motion to go into executive session for a personnel and uh, personnel issue and a potential litigation issue. Is that your motion? Yes, sir. I make a motion that we go in. Okay. There's a motion in a second to adjourn to go into uh, executive session to discuss a personnel matter and a potential litigation issue. 
Is there any further discussion at this time on the motion? Hear none. All those in favor of approving, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed like sign? In that case, we adjourn this meeting to go into an executive session. Thank you. <laughs>